Hi, I'm Sean Wendell with ERP Advisors Group, your trusted ERP advisors. So we'll kind of step outside of needs analysis and selection a little bit. From doing these presentations several times, uh, some of the feedback we've gotten is, hey, can you give us an overview of the accounting ERP market? Just what are some of the vendors out there? and How do we know the types of solutions? And this is a really simple graphic to take a look at that. There's four types, four tiers of, of software solutions that are out there. We'll start with the, with the bottom one. And these are concentric circles, right? The functionality that's in tier four is also in tier three, but tier three has more than tier four. Tier two has more than tier three. Make, does that make sense? Yeah. Tier four is QuickBooks. Um, you, you see Sage 50, MyOb. Um, uh, there's some other smaller apps out there. You know, FreshBooks and Zero and Accounting Bean. You know, there's some other little newer ones that are kind of coming on the market that are really competing with QuickBooks. That's tier four. And, and those apps are good, right? You can keep the books of, of one company. Like for us, you know, QuickBooks works, QuickBooks Online works really well. But now we have Mavenlink for an operational system to manage our projects. But that's an example of a tier four. And, and you know, some of the questions we get sometimes are, well, how big do I have to be until I've outgrown QuickBooks? Um, and there isn't, there isn't a standard answer for that. We've worked with companies that are $75 million in revenue, software companies, that have a lot of spreadsheets that, uh, <laughs> that run in QuickBooks still, and, and they're able to grow and expand. But then usually um, in those instances, it's maybe a couple founders still where they're, they're not, uh, they haven't gotten private equity. As soon as private equity comes in, that's when you have to have internal controls. You're going to get another auditing firm that's going to beat you up more. Like those are some of the reasons why you outgrow QuickBooks in that tier four phase. Tier three are bigger software solutions. Um, and by the way, that pricing is very approximate, right? We just had a quote from Intac that was at $60,000 a year. So the pricing, these are very approximate pricings. It's usually driven by your, um, your, your user count. And there's the pricings that are kind of listing over there. But you get an idea here. Tier three is mostly like financials and then maybe inventory, or financials and maybe projects, or financials and maybe light manufacturing, not what you guys do. Uh, but just, you know, you need a little bit of assembly with financials, right? There are some good solutions, Intact, SAP Business One, Sage, uh, Microsoft Dynamics GP, Acumatica, and you know, again, we've talked to firms that are uh, actually one of the firms that developed uh, Union Station. Of all the kinds of firms, uses Microsoft Dynamics GP, kind of outside of their domain. Normally, you don't usually see Microsoft Dynamics GP for real estate firms, but somebody bought it and they're making making a go at it. But really, when we start talking about multi-company recurring revenue, multiple lines of business, maybe a, a manufacturing component with some items, uh, inventory, as well as services, you really start to bubble into these tier two solutions. These, that's the level of software that can handle a diverse business, multiple entities, multiple currencies. Not to say that the tier threes can't also, but when the requirements get bigger, you're looking at a tier two, which frankly is amazing for me, right? Because I implemented PeopleSoft with Quest and uh, Wild Oats and de definitely dating myself. All these firms of like, they're, yeah, I mean like uh, Mike Gilliam started uh, Sprouts now and I think he's gonna sell that again to Wild Oats. It's crazy. Or to Whole Foods, pardon me. But the tier two solutions are great because they're not the tier ones. There are still the SAP, it's called SAP 4 HANA now, which is the big SAP in the cloud, kind of, but it's on-prem. It's a little cloudy, their cloud strategy. Um, Oracle has uh, several of the Oracle eBusiness suite, PeopleSoft, JD Edwards. Uh, they also, of course, just bought NetSuite. Um, but those the loss in, um, there's, there's lots of these kind of legacy tier one solutions that are, frankly, kind of, looking for, they kind of have an identity crisis. They're trying to determine who they are in the marketplace. There's some great instances. Uh, we had an engineering firm in North Dakota that we implemented Oracle eBusiness Suite with several years ago. It was a tough project. Like, like we had one, one of the clients was in the hospital for a while. One of the implementation guys passed out on a plane going home and he was so far out, like unconscious, thank God he was breathing, that they had to do an emergency landing 
Like that was a hard project. There was a lot of stress on that project. Um, so there is a place for this still. What's that? It could, it could kill you. That's exactly right. <laughs> Be careful with what you choose. <laughs> so you might want to hire us. I don't know. No. <laughs> yeah, there, that's right. I mean, yeah, it's kind of what we are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. So really the tier two solutions are what we focused uh, are, are even smaller, uh, early stage, well-funded, high growth firms to medium sized businesses up to 500 million in revenue. We're gonna put them on a tier two. And we would put SAP uh, by design in that package as well. That, those, those are kind of the apps that you see in this space. Hi, I'm Sean Wendell with ERP Advisors Group, your trusted ERP advisors.